good grammar and spelling are important. But if you want to write essays that inspire, messages that forge brighter connections, and emails that get the job done, you need to think about more than just grammar and spelling. This sentence is grammatically correct, but it's wordy and hard to read. It undermines the writer's message and the word choice is bland. Grammarly's cutting edge technology helps you craft compelling, understandable writing that makes an impact. When people watch your video, you can make them go. Okay, maybe that's a bit much, but you know how important it is to make them pay attention. And that's where eye-catching touches like this have a massive impact. Videos was created to allow anyone with any budget or any technical ability to add world-class animations and titles into every single video in just a few. Hello everyone. Hi, Sir Jogs. Hi. Hello. Completo na estudiante ko. One, two, three, four. No, sir. Good afternoon po. Hi, Ron. Completo na, sir. Ah, completo na? Okay, mm -hmm. and I believe the files has been sent to the chat. So, yung presentation. Okay. 
Uh, so, yung Google Drive ang binigyan ng anak. Parang, you send it to the email, Rom? Ah, uh, yes po. May sinanda ko sa kanya lang link ng Google Drive. Eh, Nandun po lahat ng mga files. Para including yung, ano, yung mga softwares, I mean, yung mga codes? Yes po, sir. Apo. Para isang okay. folder na lang po. Okay, okay. So, I assume, uh, I hope each and everyone has already uh, had that link in the Google Drive. So, that includes the PowerPoint presentation today and some of the codes. Okay? So, okay, Rom. So, shall we start? Wala na bang ano? Other? <laughs> okay, sir. Um, ay, wait. Meron ulit ako, syempre. <laughs> right, sige, sige. So, okay. recap ulit kahapon yung... Tinuro ni sir yung sa code. So, first yung mga variables, yung functions, tapos yung math. Sa math, yung MDAS, syempre, multiplication, division, addition, yan. Tapos useful ng mga uh, built-ins. Yan. Such as uh, print text, get type of objects, yan. Nasa PowerPoint din to. Tapos containers, Yan, yung mga list, dictionaries, control structure, uh, control structs, structure. Those are the if condition, while true, saka for. Then, yung modules, then yung demo ni sir na button, kung paano gamitin. Then, yung sensors po, yung DHT11. Ay, sir. Okay. Okay, so... So let's start for the last day and hopefully yes. everyone is still alive. Exciting ngayon kasi makakonect na tayo sa, in sa Wi-Fi. Ano yun uh, sir? So internet, sa internet din. Okay, don't get too excited. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway. uh, so today, uh, so welcome to our uh, third day. So let me share my slides first. And now... Okay. Okay, so so we are now in the third day. So we are MicroPython for microcontrollers for the third day. So we're going to discuss today classes, networking, and LCD display. Uh, for today, um, it will be uh, a long day because we're going to squeeze everything up. So maybe we will not have a break. Uh, so please bear with me. So we're going to squeeze everything for today. But anyway, if you find it again very uh, taxing or quite overwhelming, so anyway, we will back you up with, of course, the... Uh, review of the recording and also the links to the different tutorials wherein this uh, uh, session is based. Okay, so sabi ni Roma, ito yung uh, pinagdaanan natin kahapon. No? And we stop at user modules. So today, so since sabi ko, we're going to squeeze everything up. So first up is we're going to have searching for modules. Then we're going to have classes and objects which is quite very important, and then networking, LCD interface, and finally navigating through the MicroPython world. Uh, the meat of the today's session is actually uh, centered on classes and objects because I believe this is the most fundamental uh, thing that you need to learn in order for you to be proficient in MicroPython. I think if you don't know classes and objects, uh, medyo mahihirapan kayo sa pag sa mga MicroPython codes and also MicroPython modules na present sa internet. So, you might be tempted na uh, we do directly to applications na mga very good applications like connecting to the internet, then doing flashy uh, LCD interface. So, but uh, I don't do that. I don't give codes right away because uh, I want you to have a solid understanding of classes and objects. Because it's quite uh, useless to go to 
uh, flashy uh, Python uh, programs right away without you knowing what is this for and bakit ganon, bakit ganon. So through classes and objects, you will be able to debug and be able to understand the libraries or the modules that you're going to use in the future and probably download from the internet. Okay. Okay. So yesterday we have discussed modules. Modules are just files or Python files that uh, contains uh, variables, classes, and functions. And that is a Python file wherein you can put that in the file system of your microcontroller and then use the import statement to import this into your script. Okay. So custom modules are actually modules or Python scripts that you create. And there are also third-party uh, Python modules available in the internet that uh, you can take advantage of. And in order for Python modules to be used, these Python modules or Python files needs to be in the MicroPython file system. So third-party file uh, modules should be downloaded in your file system. And sources of custom modules, we have, of course, GitHub and GitLab modules. And we have curated websites wherein you can get custom modules. And Adult Fruit Industries from Lady Yada also has a compendium of many MicroPython modules that you can download. And in Igismo, we are planning to develop our libraries. So feel free to visit the site from time to time. And every, uh, we hope that every uh, sensor or every modules that Igismo will, will uh, uh, sell comes with uh, MicroPython libraries or MicroPython modules. So first up is I will point you to this website, https.osamicropython.com. So if you go to this website, you'll be sent through this uh, curated uh, list of all the modules that is available. So this is actually created by one of the guys who are in the, the MicroPython team. Okay, so he curated all of this. Thing. So these are actually usually GitLab and GitHub uh, links wherein you can download modules. So for example, you can download na SSD 1306 modules using this one. But anyway, please don't download that. Uh, if you want to have this SSD 1306 driver, okay, uh, there are some syntaxes here which are not uh, in line with what we're going to have today. So in other words, it's another version. Okay, But feel free to, if you want to explore more, you can download these modules if you want. So let's try to have that. No? Uh, Awesome MicroPython. Hmm. All right. Okay, there. Oops, so let me finish this. That's uh, that's that page. So if you go to this uh, link, osamicropython.com, okay, so this is an example of the various libraries that they have. And there's a table of contents. Okay. So for example, uh, if you want to have to use the micro GPS module, that means if your application calls for the uh, use of a GPS module, which are available in Egismo using the U blocks, you can use this, for example, MicroPython GPS. Okay. So in a sense, you will be pointed to a GitLab or GitHub uh, repository. And one thing to note, to check is actually, of course, get the overview. Okay. And there's a basic usage. So for example, from MicroPython GPS, import micro GPS. So the files that you're going to import is actually this one. Huh? So look for micro gps.py. So this is the main uh, Python module. Okay. okay. So that's it. Huh? 
So modules are just actually Python files. So let's go back again. And for the basic usage, of course, we have this one. And of course, we have here also examples. So typically, uh, modules give you the module and some test scripts on how to use the module. If you look here, so this is an example of the use of the text, uh, of the use of the uh, module. No? And of course, the good thing is you can modify this to your souping. Okay. So. And if you are not familiar, then you should simply say, just use Google. No? Let's say we have LCD module MicroPython. So it will give you different links now. So into this one. So this is a MicroPython ICC library from Booknala. So, so don't, uh, there are a lot of modules available now, and it keeps on growing and growing as MicroPython becomes more and more popular. Okay. So that is how we get our modules. Okay, now let's go to objects and classes. Okay, so the meat of our session this afternoon. So in real world, we actually think and interact with objects. Think of yourself, no? So in real world, us, we usually view everything in our world as objects. So this is a dog, this is a, a table or a bench, this is a TV, this is a bike. Okay, so we see everything in our world as objects. So even the sky, we consider it as object. The water we drink are objects, the faucets, and everything. No? So objects are actually the key to understanding OOP, or object-oriented programming. Since Python and MicroPython is highly dependent on object-oriented paradigm, and Python is actually an OOP uh, centric language. No? So we need to understand the concept of objects. So that's why, because a program is an object oriented uh, programming paradigm. So we think of objects instead of text and instead of variables. So in Python, everything is an object. So as I said, everything in Python is an object, and each object has a type. Okay? So we can create new objects of some type. And we can manipulate objects and we can destroy objects. So example objects that we have done is of course the native objects. We have the floats, the integers, the strings, the lists, the dictionaries. Okay, everything that we played with uh, with in the previous two days are all objects. Okay. So everything in Python is objects. Even the functions are considered objects. So think of Every option, every part of Python is an object. So and that's the key. No? Now, I keep on thinking about what is object. So what, how do we define an object? No? So an object in real world, as also in programming language, an object has, of course, characteristics or states, and it has actions and behavior. Okay. So for example, a person, Okay, we are we, we, I, myself, uh, our audience here, Melani, John Array, are examples of persons. So we can't think, consider ourselves as objects. No? And each person has a characteristic. So what are the characteristics of a person? So it has a name, an age, country, address, height, weight, gender. And the behavior or actions, we can actually stand, we can actually walk, we can actually eat, we can sing, we can run, okay? We can fly, so some, okay, maybe some someone could fly, of course, with uh, the help of uh, propulsion, of course. No? So objects actually has these characteristics. It has characteristics or states, and it has actions and behavior. Okay. Now, to differentiate objects from class, okay, a class is actually a blueprint of an object. 
So for example, a person class. Okay. So a person class is a blueprint of a person object. And instances or examples of persons are considered object. So this one is a person object. This one is a person object. This one is a person object. Okay. So if we're going to relate that to our class today, okay, I, Jeffrey, Melanie, John Ray, every one of you are examples of the person class. Okay. And Jeffrey Galino is an instance of a person class. Melanie is an instance of a person class. John Ray is an instance of a person class. Or in other words, all of us are objects or instances of the person class. Or we are all examples of a person class. So in this case, we can generate objects from a class. Or that means we can create objects based on the blueprint, which is the person class. Okay. And each object has the corresponding fields and methods or characteristics and the uh, behaviors per se. No? So when you create an object, so you need to have a class. So here, person is a class. Okay. And person one is an object of the person class. Or in other words, person one is an instance of the person class. So the class here is person, the object is person one. Okay. And if the class name is person, when you call that as a function, that is actually what we call the constructor, or the call some called it as initiator. So the constructor is a function whose name is actually the name of the class. And it might have parameters or not. And the result of that, it will return an object. So therefore, person one is an example of a person. Okay. So now that we have a person one, then we can set the object's properties, or we call this the fields. So person one, that name is the characteristics of a person. Particularly, person one's name field is set to GUI. And person one's age is set to 25, and person one's country is set to Portugal. Okay, so these are fields. And also, each uh, object has the actions or the behaviors. We call this the methods no? inherited from the person. So, person one, for example, has the method, uh, the person has the method description, and person one can be invoked to execute sorry this uh, action which is the description okay. so the description might be it will give you what uh, the person's uh, description is no? so usually it's a, a function that will give you a string so this is now the graphical representation of the class so we have a person class and its fields are name, age, country, and of course, the method is the description. So these are fields, and these are the methods. So fields are actually variables or objects, and methods are actually functions, no? which are under the person class. Now, if we're going to in initiate, instantiate a person called person1 from the blueprint, then this person one will have its corresponding field, like your name, age, and country. So person one is actually an example of a person class, and the fields are its name is Rui, its age is 25, and its country is Portugal. Okay. And if you're going to call the description, this will print Rui is 25 years old, and he is from Portugal. Okay. Same goes if you create another person called person two, so you can also set its different fields like name, age, and country. Okay, so sort of like the class is a blueprint, while the objects are examples of the class. So you can extend this to person. Let's say let's use this to a car class. So a car class, the instance of a car class can be a Ferrari, uh, a Volkswagen, or a Toyota. No, 
and the current fields must be plate number, color, okay, size of wheels, and so on and so forth. Okay, so those are objects and classes. So the class person, okay, so this is an example of a Python script that defines a class. So we have the class keyword, then we have the person, and then we have the first uh, function, which is the initialization. It will ask for the name, age, and country, and it will set the various fields. So the various fields of the person class is name, age, and country. And the description, which is a method, is actually a function that will print this. No? Percent %s is percent years old and he is from percent %s. So this percent is actually your formatting. So whatever is following the percent here, this will be substituted for the first percent, second percent, and third percent. So the s stands for string. D means that in, this means percent %s, that means insert a string. So the first argument must be a string. This is insert uh, D, which is decimal. So it must be a uh, decimal value. So that will be age. And then, of course, percent S, the country must be string. Okay? Okay, so this is the most simple class that we can have. So let's demonstrate that. Okay, so I want you to open the person class that we have created. Oh, person there. Minimize this first. So this is our person class. So let's have the magnifier. Again. Okay. 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 So let's have a reset. Control D. And then. So this is our person.py. So this is a, uh, a Python script, which can actually be a module. And inside this script, we have the class statement, so which defines the person and the initialization, which is the constructor. And of course, the various fields, name, age, and country. So take note of the self. Self is a keyword relating to the object. So every class definition will have the self as the first element which you're, wherein you have to define the virus field, as well as when you create a function or a method, you create that using the def function and the initial argument is the self, which means that uh, you're referring to an object. Okay. So let's try to run this. Okay, so there are two methods to do this. You can run that. Okay. And once that is run, it is now part of your memory. So we now have the person object. And if we're going to put person, it will tell you that person is a class. Okay. So how do we create an instance of the person? So let's say I instantiate myself. My name is Joe. So I create a person name or a person object called Joe. And then I say person. And if you look at the initialization, it will require a name, age, and country. So my name could be job, which is a string. And then my age should be, so I'm still young. I'm 18. <laughs> okay, so I'm still 18. And then, of course, my country is PH, which stands for Philippines. So take note, this is the initialization of uh, the constructor named by init. So when I do this, 
So I'm going to create now an object. So when I call jog, so jog is a person object. That means I'm an object of the person class or a person object. So in other words, I'm jog is an instance of the person class. And this one is actually the memory location of this class, uh, of this object. So, and we now have object. So if you're going to look at your memory, so you now have the class person and you now have an object job, okay? So, let's say jog, so jog is an object. Now, every object now will inherit, of course, the various field. So if I say jog, that name so it is the string diog and if i say jog that age it's 18 and jog that uh, country so i'm from th okay and i can then call the method so jog description so jog is 18 years old and he is from th okay so this is these are the fields age name so you can use the fields okay so for example i use the field jog so we say jog that name okay Okay, plus, let's say, Papo. <laughs> so what this will happen? So I get the jog name, then I said plus the string guapo. So that will result to jog guapo. So honest, honest opinion uh, based on my mother's description of me. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> okay. Um, so that's how it. So if you have the various fields of the object, you can actually use this anywhere now. So think of it as the fields as a new Python object and you can do various operations and various use of that. And also I can change the name of the object on the fly. So instead instead of naming it a jog.name, I can say that as uh, Fiolo. Wow. So that case, if I look at jog, that name, it's now Piolo. It's no longer my name. No? Okay. So I have changed on the fly the, the name, the name field, or the characteristics of uh, the object class, or the object jog, whose name is now no longer jog, but it is now Piolo. And of course, you can actually get the help on every object that you create. So when I say jog, so you can actually say jog is an object from the person class and is of the type person. Okay. So it has a function, which is the description. And of course, when you say, excuse me, jog that tab it will give you the various uh, fields no? and descriptions so since jog is now an object and this is what we done usually no when we find the fields and descriptions of every objects we just call the objects put a point and press tab so i'm uh, sorry tab. so these are the various uh, fields and uh, methods in the jog object so we can use them, okay? So I can now create another class, another object. So let's say we use, say, Mom Melanie. <laughs> so Mom Melanie is a type of person. I now create a new object and so name, so let's call this Mel. I know age, Mom. Mom. <laughs> oh, so, so maybe, uh, 13? Ah, oh, so sorry. So 17 lang po. Okay lang. So 
17 is the age and of course uh from what country so baka may korean descent si madam so and cr so korean so we now have a new object which is melanie and when we say melanie that name and have mel and so on and so forth so if you look at your dir now so we have two objects jog and melanie which are both an example of a person class. So Jog and Melanie are objects of the person class. Okay, and we can create more objects and modules. And from that on, our memory now contains the objects Jog and Melanie. So we can now think of programming our system in terms of objects. So when we do our program, we now interact with objects. So that's the one thing I want to drive. When you do object-oriented programming in Python, you think of every aspect of the code as objects. And each object is are, are actually examples of classes. And objects will have two properties. The description are the fields, which are actually uh, variables. Okay? And then the methods, or what we call the functions of this object. Okay? So think of everything in Python as objects, which are derived from a blueprint which is a class okay so that's a good important thing objects and classes and once you have a grasp of that then welcome to python you can now uh, develop applications on your own and you can now get to the various tutorials online and you now have a better understanding of all of these libraries and sample codes that we can find in the internet as well as other applications okay okay Okay, so now that we have the class, so let's first up, let's discuss networking and we investigate the wireless LAN class. So ESP32 has the networking capabilities and networking capabilities are also defined as objects of the wireless LAN class. Okay, so the first step when you activate your network or you activate your ESP32, you import the module network so import network and then from that we create an object which is wireless lan taken from the wireless lan class okay so wireless lan is an example of a wireless clan uh, class so in other words wireless lan is an object of the wireless lan class okay and we set it in its station is mode by the way, there are two modes in the wireless class. One is access point and one is station. That means access point interface and station interface. Now the station interface is, think of it as a client. Okay, So that means when we connect to an, a wireless LAN network, each of us will have an IP address and each of us are considered the client in the wireless network. So if you set the mode to network that station interface, you are a client. Okay. Contrast with that, we have AP, which is network wireless LAN, network that APIF. This time, AP is a access point. So that means he is not a client, but our ESP32 is the actual access point itself. Or in other words, it is the gateway. Okay, So it will manage every part of that network. So if you don't have any Wi-Fi net or wireless LAN network in your ha in your home, you can create an ESP32 as an access point, and the ESP32 will act as the server, as well as the gateway in your system. But since we have wire wireless networks, we are a part of wireless network, so you can set your microcontroller as a station interface. So once the wireless LAN object is created we can then call the various methods so the various methods of the wireless LAN object is we have that active so this means it will activate the interface the scan method will actually scan for access point and is connected is a method of the wireless LAN that to check if the station is connected to an access point and wireless LAN connect is actually a method 
that will connect you, connect the ESP32 to the corresponding wireless LAN network. So it will require the strings ESSID and of course the password of the ESSID. And we can configure the, the corresponding wireless LAN once connected, okay? And the IF config method, it will give the interfaces IP address, that net mask, the gateway and domain name server, okay? So these are the various fields when we do networking class, okay? So let's try to get that an example. Okay. So, so the first thing we have to do is, of course, we import the network. No? So import network. So we imported the module network. By the way, you might say, sanggaling si network. <laughs> so wala naman siya sa ating device. So network is actually a built-in uh, module. By the way, to find the various built-in modules, all you have to do is call help, then modules. So lalabas yung mga built-in modules. So meron tayong network, one wire. So we have played actually with yesterday with machine right this one so the built-in modules and we have played of course with u time which is our time module so there are other modules built in for example sockets so when you do socket programming we have json micro json uio is for file io systems and of course we have used dht yesterday huh? the dht module which is consists of the dht classes okay and so on and so forth so again, help underscore modules, it will give you the built-in modules. Okay, so, so now that we have imported the network, or let's import it again, import network. We now create a wireless LAN module. So that means wireless LAN. Now, for network, that WLAN, and we say, network dot station interface okay so it will configure now your wi-fi so this step wireless lan network one when you create an instance of the wireless lan what happens in the background is that the wi-fi module of the microcontroller is now being powered up and initialized so kumbaga Yung Wi-Fi peripheral niya is being initialized and powered up and being actually being activated when we create a wireless LAN object. So when everything is good, then if we look at our WLAN, so we now have a wireless LAN object. Okay? So active, uh, we now have an object. But hindi pa siya active. So to make it active, so let's say, WLAN that uh, let's say let's look at the field next so if we say WLAN that active so it will give you false no? so that means the WLAN LAN is just uh, being initialized but it is not being made active in other words hindi pa siya nag on no? so to make it active we can say WLAN that active because tayo ng true. Okay. So that means okay, let's see. WLAN active. If we carry if that is active, so we already are active. So naka-on na yung wireless LAN natin. So, and it is in the station interface. So your ESP32 is actually now uh, will act as a client. And if you're a client in a network, so kailangan mo mag-connect with an access point, di ba? So how do you know if there's an access point available? So sa cellphone, usually what you do is we search for SSSID. So how do we carry the various access points present in my area? 
So to do that, you, yep. Yes, sir. Uh, come again, sir. It's too choppy. Hi, sir Jog. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yung pong ano, naka-false pa rin sa akin. Yung pag sinabi mo active? Oh, ano yung command ulit yung nasa loob ng ano? Ng... Yeah, wireless LAN active. Ganyan. True. Active. So, it should be active. So, try nyo po, she should be active already. Kaya sir, small letter yep. sa yung tiyo kanina. Sir? Okay na po. Small letter. Okay na, so you are now active. Okay, so you can query if you are active. So, it will give you true. So, your brain's your module, ESP32 modules network uh, capability is now being turned on. And just like any client, pwede ka nang mag-connect sa any existing wireless LAN. So, pero how do you know the virus wireless LAN? So, meron tayong tinatawag na method, which is scan. Na? Wireless LAN that scan. Okay. This one, when you activate that, it will scan the various access point present. So, it will give you actually a list of all the various access points present. So, mine, I have para fiber DAU2 and this is the MAC address and the virus fields also. And also we have direct NT Bravia, so this is another access point, and para fiber 28 HJ as another access point. So sa inyo, it might be different. So yan yung mga access points na present sa inyo. Okay. So yun yung mga access points na nakikita ng ating module, ng ESP module. So in my network, nasa para fiber actually ako, na? Okay. So once I have that, I can say WSLAN that. No, let's say nakita ko na si access points. First, I have para fiber DAU2. So how do I connect to that network? Okay. So we use the connect field, na? So we have. Oh, by the way, how do you know the various methods ni wireless LAN? So all you have to do is call again the object uh, dot and then press tab. So lalabas yung mga various methods niya. Huh? So we have active, config, connect, disconnect. So how do you know that these are me methods, not fields? Usually ang, ang standard is as long as it's small letters, that's a hint that these are actually methods or what we call functions under the wireless LAN object. So, gagamitin natin ngayon is si connect, no? wireless LAN connect. So, it will require two fields. So, we have para, so, magkakabit ako sa aking bahay, para fiber dash BAU2 BAU2 A U2 and password. So let's say password. Okay. So para fiber the A U2, yung name ng access point. So in strings yan siya. And then ang next is yung password ng uh, SSS ID. So alam niyo yung password niyo. So when you press that, so mag magta try siya magko-connect sa network. Okay, and okay. So, sa akin, I'm disconnected. <laughs> so, walang lalabas. So, if I say WLAN that is connected, false. No?
calls pa rin. So, bakit hindi ako connected? Simply because uh, yung password ko is uh, wrong. Okay? So, deliberately, nilagay ko rin wrong because, of course, for security reasons, uh, binobroadcast tayo sa internet, uh, binobroadcast tayo sa YouTube, so, uh, hindi ko pwede ilagay doon yung password. But again, try it yourselves, na? If it will work. Okay? Pag hindi siya nag-connect, it will always continue connecting. So, persistent siya eh. So, it will always keep on trying and trying and trying to connect until makakonect siya. So, that's a problem also. So, in our program, we usually terminate this. But then, to terminate it now, we just uh, create a reboot. Oh, sorry. So, persistent pa rin. So, we'll just have to reset it. Okay, so once you have connected, okay, pwede nyo siyang um, going, you're going to call the wireless LAN that I is config. Or pwede nyo ilagay is connected. So wireless LAN is not defined because ni reset ko siya. But sa inyo, once nag-connected kayo, dapat lalabas ang true or false. Okay. So let me, since nag-restart ako, uh, reconstruct ako ulit. No? Import network. Ah, ito lang lang. Okay. okay, tapos wireless LAN is equal to Network Station Interface. Okay. I now have a WLAN that uh, scan again. Oh, it must be active first. WLAN that active. So it's false. WLAN active true. Okay, so hopefully, so it's already true. And the WLAN, that scan, then so I will do a scan of my network. Okay, so in that case, I will now connect, no? Since I am already active, so I can say WLAN, that connect. I will connect to our uh, fiber underscore da u2. And then my password. Okay, so para Mga connect ako, itatago ko muna. <laughs> okay. So do it yourself also. Try it if you can connect on your Wi-Fi network. I'm sure most of you are in your Wi-Fi network. So. Okay. So 
I tried to connect using the commands uh, rslan that connect. Uh, Then enter nyo yung password, uh, SSS ID, tapos yung password. Yun yun. Okay. So once you enter that, if the password and SSI correct, it should be connected. Okay. So I'm now actually connected because when I say, when pag nakakonect na kayo, you can actually query is connected. Wait, false. I'm still not connected. Uh, try call it. <laughs> Maybe I have the wrong password. Okay, so sa sino na nakakonect sa inyo? Any of you who have connected? Have you tried? Yes, sir. Okay. Sarang ko yung hindi ko masundan. Ba't hindi mo masundan? Okay. Doon pa lang ako, sir, sa unang-una, yung after ng import network. Tapos okay. doon na sa WLAN equal to network that WLAN, tapos yung network that station that I, I underscore. I, I station underscore IF. Underscore IF. Nag-error siya eh. Ganun ba? Yung parang ganito? Underscore ba yun, sir? STA underscore IF. Okay. Tapos sir, pagkatapos nun, ayan, may lumabas na. Okay. Anong next doon? Yung WLAN.active. AE, ano ko lang, that .active, ganun lang. Without the, ah, oh, WLAN.active, then lagyan nyo ng field na, yung, na parameter na true. Okay. So, open, close, sir. Yeah, parang ganito, WLAN. WLAN, WLAN tapos ako ba? Then, bigyan nyo, lagyan nyo nga ng true. Okay. So, pa. true. Yan. Okay, sir. Tapos, may lumabas so once, na siya. So, once na lumabas na siya, you can actually query it. Ayan. So, to check if talagang naging active na. So, WActive is a method that will activate, or that will turn on your WLAN. So, so WLAN.active lang, sir, ilalagay ah. ko. Pero may open and close pa rin. Oh, may open siya rin. Parang okay. ito, kung wala tong field kasi, parang tinatanong mo siya kung active na ba, ka, ka na ba. Pero kung lagyan mo siya okay. ng input, that means you are setting it. Okay? Okay. Either Pero nag-throw na siya. So, that means active ka na. Active so, na siya. So, naka-on siya. So, you can do a... Saan? WLAN. Scan. So, magsa-scan siya for the various networks. Bakit ganun ang lumabas? Iba sa akin. Ah, baka pang iba-iba talaga yan, sir. Iba-iba, sir. Yung kung anong mga access points na nandun sa inyong area. So, of course, dito sa akin, meron si Parafiber. Okay. The direct. So, sa inyo might be different, of course. Okay. <laughs> Very powerful naman, ma'am, nung wire router nyo kung nakakaabot dito. Hindi, <laughs> <laughs> so, parang iba kasi yung format. Mahaba lang talaga yung screen ko, kaya parang ang, ang iksi lang nang lumabas. Okay. Pero pag may lumabas na Parafiber DAU2, wow, very powerful yung routers nyo dyan. Nakakaabot from again, the Oro 2. <laughs> Ayan, so may nakikita ko na. Okay, yung so, Wi-Fi ko. Oh, meron dyan yung Wi-Fi mo, di ba? Yung, okay. uh, yung sa'yo. So, all okay. you have to do is wireless LAN connect. So, magko-connect ka. So, ano yung name ng ng router mo? Yung SSID mo? Ito sa akin kasi para fiber. So, exit mo yan. Para fiber. Ganun. Tapos, ang next field is ano yung password. String siya. Dapat string ni, ni quotes. Ganun. So, for example, password. Press new enter. So, magta-try siya connect. So, ang nangyayari, yung ESP32 mismo yung nagko-connect ngayon sa ating Wi-Fi network. Sir, yung password na 
password diyan, i-replace ko ng password ng Wi-Fi. Oh, password ng Wi-Fi mo. So, <laughs> so for security reasons, uh, hindi mo ipapakita, of course. Kasi kung ilalagay ko yung password ko dito, ibabroad ka sa YouTube to. So, wow. <laughs> Nalaman na nila, Sir Mark. Nalaman na nila, no? <laughs> sa akin. Okay, so, so kayo lahat, nakakonect na. Aside kay ma'am, ma'am. Uh, other guys. So, malalaman nyo if you are connected because pag tinawag nyo is connected, magsasabi siya lang true. Ha? So, uh, kung tatawagin mo WLAN is connected, lalabas true. So, kung true, that means you are already connected in the network. Pero kung false, hindi ka connected. So, you can do again yung connect. Na? You, ah, so, ulitin lang yun, sir. Uh, until uh, you will be connected. Okay. Okay. So, okay na. So, if you are all connected now, yung Network 101 natin, di ba? Ibig sabihin yung IPv6, if you're familiar with that, we have the, how many bits ba yun? Parang 32 bits na IP address, di ba? Uh, IPv4 pala. Yung IPv4 is 32 bit and yung IPv6 is 64 bit na IP address. Yung 192 point something, di ba? So once you are connected to the network, so nilagyan ka ngayon ng IP address ng iyo ng inyong uh, router, ng inyong gateway, no? Sa so in your uh, Wi-Fi network. So each of one of us has a corresponding IP address. So you can actually query the IP address of your ESP32 now. So to query that, you can actually uh, uh, type in WLAN ifconfig. Okay, so when you query that, ang lalabas is ganito. So parang yung sa IAIP config sa command line. Na? So it will give you the first string is your IP address. So sa akin, 192.168.18.255. This is the mask. Na? And this is the gateway. And this is the domain name server. Okay. So yung mga network guys natin dito ah alam na alam nila to no? <laughs> Sina Sir Vic okay saka si John Ray Okay So what's important is itong gateway 19.18 ito yung ating router actually yung main router natin so and then the sub uh, the subnet mask uh, pero important is ito lang 192.168 so ito yung IP address natin so we are now part of the network. So if you do perform ping, yung mga ping, ping na mga systems, you can now actually ping 192.168 in our network. Okay, so of course, we will not do that because it will take time. Okay, so what can you do if you are already connected? So if you are already connected, you can now perform uh, applications like you can create a web server and you can create a client, so pwede kang mag-connect sa network and then you can connect to websites and then you can download uh, JSON files or whatever fields. So if there are APIs where you can download, pwede na siya. So, of course, uh, that's another topic. No? So once you are connected, we can now create servers and clients and the thing that you learn is the sockets, the socket modules. So you can create a socket and then you have to learn other protocols now like uh, file uh, file sharing protocol like FTP, uh, DHTP, okay, Telnet, no? and so on and so forth. And the other IoT paradigm of networking, yung MQTT and co-op, no? and among others. Okay, so we can now play with uh, the ESP32 as an IoT node. Okay, but of course. Uh, we will not discuss this today. <laughs> so that's reserved for another uh, session. But of course, kung gusto nyo. Yes, sir. Sir, don't, don't. 
Ah, uh, may question lang sir. Ah, uh, gaano yung distance nung sa uh, Wi-Fi tsaka sa ESP? Ah, uh, gaano yung pwedeng sakop ng distance? Okay. If you notice yung ating ESP32, kung titingnan niyo, meron siyang antenna. Dito is if you look at the PCB. So PCB antenna siya. Okay? There are other modules na meron siyang uh, RPA connector. Okay, I'll give you one sample. Teka. Okay. Okay. Yep. Uh -huh. yeah. So, ito, if you look at this one, meron siyang oh, nasa kabila. Yeah. Ayun. Nakikita niyo yung parang gold. Ayun. Ayun. So ito siya, pwede siya lagyan ng external antenna. Pero yung sa atin, yung yung module natin, ito siya, ano lang, PCB antenna. So that means naka PCB antenna, yung range nito is medyo mababa. Pero kung gusto mo siya i-extend, lagyan mo siya na external antenna. So kung may external antenna, it can extend up to the range. And standard yun, di ba? Standard ang ating wireless LAN, ang 802.11 AC or 802.11 N. So di ba, ang standard usually pag Wi-Fi network is around 300 meters line of sight. And kung walang obstacle, you can extend up to 500. So for this, kung line of sight, I have tested it at around maximum range of 500 meters. Sa dagat yun, no? Pero pag nasa urban area kayo, using only PCB antennas, then, typical. Yung parang imagine nyo yung kung ang, saan naaabot ng laptop natin. Ganon din. Diba? When you use a laptop in a wireless network, kung saan siya aabot, ganon din ang ano niya, ganon din yung performance niya. So typically less than 500 meters no? ang ano. So assume niyo na lang mga 10 to 15 kung very crowded yung area niyo kung maraming obstacles and buildings. Okay? I hope that answers your question, Janari. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay, so na-connect na tayo. So that's it. Uh you can connect to the network and so on and so forth. You can actually connect to, let's try natin, connect kung uh, papayag ba. <laughs> so, something like this, WLAN. Oh, sorry, not pala. If you look at WLAN, that tabs. So, that are the other things you can do. So, you can disconnect, okay, and so on and so forth. So, again, so, sino ko lang is how to connect to the network. And for other applications so we'll have it on another training day but uh, i gave you one example file na nasa google drive is yung let's open ba yan ah, file open okay this one so i open you using wi-fi pi So this is a activated uh, system wherein when you run this, tatawagin nyo na lang si Connect Wi-Fi and the SSSD and password. So parang meron ka ng function to connect. And this is what you do. So you call connect.wifi. So, so you can try this Wi-Fi. And of course, may binigay ako na para for you to work, to try Uh, playing with uh, yung GPIO server. Okay. So, medyo medyo mataas to. So, kung iraran nyo to, so actually uh, you connect an LED. So, kung 2 siya, you can put 19. Plus akin, nakakabit sa 19. And so on and so forth. And then, lalagyan nyo ng password. SSD. SSID ID and password. Okay. Or pwede nyo siya i-replace na instead of when you connect, 
instead of SSID password, lagyan nyo ng direct string here. So, kung ano yung string nyo. So, palitan nyo lang yan. Okay. And then, uh, I think, uh, pwede nyo pala to siya i- uncomment because sa akin nakalagay sa boot file yung ano ka. So, yung comment nyo lang to, then try to run this. Ang mangyayari is, meron ka ng server. Yung ESP32 will act as a server. Tapos, when you connect to the IP address of that ESP network sa inyong browser, you can actually turn on and off an LED in your browser. So, I think si John Array, uh, nakita mo yung uh, applications nito kaninang morning, di ba? So, ito yun na yan siya. You can try this one. So, lalabas sa cellphone or sa browser nyo, when you connect to that IP address, ito, 192.825, may lalabas na server, na website, web page, wherein you can turn on and off the LED. Okay? So, we will not go to this because this will consume a lot of time. <laughs> okay, so for the other day. Okay? So, any other questions so far? So, Okay, so shall we proceed? So those is the those are the networking capability of the ESP32. Okay. Okay, so let's now go to the fun part. <laughs> we have sensors and LEDs as objects in MicroPython. So we have discussed uh, objects. No? By the way, let's go back to the wireless LAN class. So here we can see that OOP is working. No? Wireless LAN is an example of, as an, is an instance of the wireless LAN class. Okay? And when it is already defined, we can call its method. Okay. So in OOP, in object-oriented programming, kung meron na tayong applications, meron tayong, of course, our ESP32, then meron tayong LCD, Meron tayong DST11, then meron tayong LED. So kung a-applyan nyo siya ngayon ng object-oriented programming paradigm, we can therefore now think of the LCD as an object. Yung LED is an object, and sensor is an object. Diba? So kung gagawin natin object si LED, so what are the various uh, methods ni LED? So pwede siyang on, pwede siyang off. Diba? And so sensor, DH11, what are the various methods na, nasa kanya? So it might be yung ginawa natin kapon, yung measure, yung humidity, yung uh, temperature. So those are the methods ni sensor object. And of course, we're going to play with this time, we're going to add the LCD. So we are going to define an LCD object with the firing fields and the various methods. No? So your methods lang are just functions no? wherein these are activities we can do with the objects. So this is an example of OOP. So I want you to think from now on that everything that you do in MicroPython, everything is an object. So yung mga sensors na ilalagay nyo, so i-imagine nyo na lang sila as objects. And you program them with the thinking of objects. Because everything in Python is an object. Okay? So here, when we run this, we have an application. We usually import the modules. So from machine, we import pins. So from now, ginawa natin to previously. So therefore, we can now better understand itong mga statements. So that means from machine, machine is a module. We import the pin. Ano tong pin? So pin is actually a class. Okay. Ano tong DHT? So DHT is actually a class also. Okay. So every module is composed of different classes. Actually, no? different classes. So, so so from machine, in-import natin si pin as class. So class ni LED. Si DSC is class ni sensor. And then we import SSD1306. So this is the module that defines the various classes in the LCD. Okay? So we now have modules imported which will... Uh, define the various fields and methods in these different uh, objects. So once na import na natin yung module, we can then create objects. So si LCD 
is actually you call the module SSD 1306, SSD 1306 I2C. So this is another class, okay, which is a subclass of the uh, SSD. And ito yung initialization. So this is the number of rows and columns. So we have 128 columns, 64 rows, because this is a 128 row by 64 column uh, LCD. And then we define the I2C interface. Okay, so dapat merong kang I2C object. Hindi ko lang nalagay. Then we have the sensor. So sensor is an example of an object. So a sensor is an object of the DXT class. Okay. And we specify anong pin siya nakakabit and anong classing DXT sensor. It should be DXT 11 or DXT 12. Then we have LED equals pin 13, then pin out. So this one, LED is an object of the pin class galing kay machine module and nakakabit siya kay pin 13 and yung data direction niya is output. Okay? So pin is a class and LED is an instance of the pin class or an object of the pin class. Okay? So yan yung pinaglalaruan natin for the last few days. No? Those are just objects and classes. Okay? So once you have defined the objects, di ba yung LED, pwede natin gawing one. So we call this value. This is actually a method. A method of the LED object. The read is a method of the sensor object. LCD the text is a method of the LCD object. LCD the fill is a method of the LCD object. LCD the show is a method of the LCD object. So methods are actually just functions, no? okay? Which is under the corresponding objects. Okay. Okay. So let's now play with our SSD thirteen zero six. So along with your kit, meron tayong LCD na sinama because this is good for interfaces na pwede nyo magpa-display. So pwede kayo magpa-display ng mga text. And if you go to the advanced applications, pwede kayo magpalabas ng graphics. So may mga applications, may library ako actually to for you to use wherein from a bitmap file, i-convert niya into an array file which is stored to the flash tapos iso show sa LCD. So there are techniques in putting uh, images in your SSD 1306. And generally, this is an OLED, no? OLED uh, organic LED display. So definitely isang color lang siya. Yung nasa inyo is white. So there are some with color blue and I have seen color whites. And also meron ding ata color yellow. There are some few with color there. Pero ang nakalagay ata sa atin is color white. No? White yung uh, pixel. And this is a 128 by 64 pixel and 0.96 inch yung diagonal. So this 128.64 pixel means every point ni LCD is a pixel. Diba? This is a pixel, a pixel, a pixel. So ilang uh, rows siya. So how many rows? So we have 100. Uh, 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 there are 64 rows and 128 columns. So yung pinaka taas dito, that is known as pixel 00. Then yung sunod is pixel 01. So the X okay, represents the column, the Y represents the row. So when I say pixel at location 00, and dito siya. Pixel at location 0, yung X, and then uh, yung Y, uh, uh, location na... Uh, uh, Let's say pixel uh, 128 0, that means 128 yung x, so andito, and yung y is 0, so ito siya na pixel. So ito siya, pinaka nandito, that is actually pixel at location. Yung x niya ngayon is 0, yung y niya is 64. So ito siya, this is 1, uh, yung x location ngayon is 128, yung Y location is 64. So this is 128, 64. So we, mod, uh, we denote the pixels in terms of X and Y location. Okay? So ito yung 00, ito yung 128, 
64. So, ito yung 0, uh, 128. And this is 128, 0. So, yung gitna, so yung makakalculate nyo na. No? So, that's 128.64. So, we define, uh, we just locate the pixel by x and y. And each pixel is represented by 1 bit. So, yung isang pixel gawin mong 1, mag-on siya. Kung yung pixel gawin mong 0, mag-off siya. So, dalawang values lang to siya. Pero when we say about color LCDs, iba nang uh, usapan. So, every pixel represents a color. So, we have RGB colors, red, green, and blue. So, mas memory intensive. But dito, isang color lang tayo. So, we have a monochromatic output. Okay? Now, the SSD1306 connects via I2C. So, this is a protocol which is known as Inter-Integrated inter Communication Protocol, which is actually consists of uh, two wires. No? So, SEL and SDA. So, SDA means serial data, SEL means serial clock. Okay. And then, of course, we have the power supply, B in and ground. So, take note lang, no? the B in must be 3.3. .3. So, isa natin sa ikakabit dun sa 3.3 .3 output. Okay. And of course, this one is connected to ground. Now, for the SEL and SDA, so these are the generic no? uh, standard uh, IOs. So actually, this is the hardware default for SPI uh, high speed, so which is 22 and 21. Uh, very, very high speed. No? Pero pwede na siyang palitan. No? You can put it anywhere you want because of the thing, because pwede mo siyang gawing software. So, pwede mo siya ilagay sa 16 or 17, just like yung DHT11. Okay? Okay? So, we're going to construct now this interface for this uh, system. So, that means ito yung connection. No? So, let's follow after me. Uh, so, get your breadboards and uh, your, your kits and then your SSD1306. Okay, let's do the fitting. So take note pala of the uh, labels. Yung ating uh, module has a corresponding label in terms of yung pins. Uh, balik natin. So take note of the label. No? Ground, BCC, SCL, SA. Parang sa atin na nalagay might be different, no? Maybe nagbalik tad si VCC and ground. So, VCC is connected to 3.3, .3, ground is to our ground, and this is for the data pins, SEL and SDA. Okay. So, kabit natin, no? So, let's go back to Fritzing. Oh, sorry. So, uh, so meron na kong so may, may, may kinabit na tayo kahapon so wag nyo na siya palitan no? so as is lang yung kahapon but pero kung tinanggal nyo kagabi so reconstruct again yung LED natin saka yung DHT11 so leave those things as is what we have uh, uh, connected yesterday this time, dadagdagan lang natin sila ng uh, SSD 1306. Okay. So, lagay ko lang siya here. Okay, for example, there. Okay, there. So, if you look at this, okay. So, merong ground, VCC, SCL. So, yung ground, kakabit natin sa ground. So, hanapin nyo yung ground sa inyong, sa inyong uh, microcontroller. So, careful na meron nakalagay na GND. So, particularly parang... Uh, close to... May isang ground na malapit sa USB. No? USB pin. So, meron dalawa actually on one side. So for here, yung ground ko, pwede ko siya ikabit dito. So I put that here.
And then, yung VCC natin, as I said, hindi nyo siya pwede ilagay sa VN. No? Because that's 5 volts. So, to protect the uh, OLED, kasi yung rating niya based on the data sheets is 3.3 volts. So, ilalagay natin siya sa 3.3, which is nandito. Point three. Yeah. Take note, though, be careful because minsan uh, sa other uh, I2C, uh, other OLEDs, baliktad si ground sa VCC. So, take uh, careful with this. So, ground to ground and VCC to 3.3 volts. So, sa atin, nakalagay uh, 3 something at that. Nakalagay sa atin. Okay. Then after that, yung SCL and SDA. So lagay niyo siya kahit saan niyo lang gusto. So sa akin nilagay ko siya kay 17 and 16. So where is 16? Kung ko nilagay sa kabila. Number 16. So actually ito siya, TX, DN, RX. Ah, no. Tama. Wala nakalagay, no. Oh, anyway, for sure, for example, kung nilagay nyo siya kay sa, for example, nilagay nyo kay, actually, RXT and TX2 are 16 and 17. Pero you can put it anywhere you want. Pero hindi natin siya pwede ilagay kay 19 because we already used that for our LED. So pwede natin siya ilagay sa 18. No? Pwede ilagay nyo sa 18. Or for the sake of, ano, pwede sa D5 na lang. So you can choose, no? whatever, kung ano yung convenient. So nilagay ko yung SCL kay sa D5 and then SDA lagay natin sa 18. Okay. Okay. So in that case, meron tayong full system. No? So meron tayong applications na merong LED, my DHT11, and of course, dinagdagan natin ng uh, LCD. Pero kung tinanggal nyo na ito kahapon, so para to save time, pwede na tanggalin nyo muna. So, concentrate muna tayo dito na lang sa LCD. And you can that later on if you have more free time. Okay? Okay. So, that's the connection. So, construct your circuits now. And we now proceed when you are finished. So I'll give you uh, five minutes for that. <laughs> so I will just give a uh, bathroom break, five to, oh, five to seven minutes, okay?
job yung SD, yeah. yung serial data, kahit saan doon na SD? Anong, uh, what do you mean SD? SD po. Yung nakalagay po kasi sa mga ano, sa, my, sa board ko. Ah, SD0, pa. SD1, SD2, SD3, ganun. SD1. Yun yung, saan po ba kakabit yung serial data? Uh, what you're talking about the SD32 map? Yung Apo. LCD or yung LED? Apo. Ito pong uh, LCD. Okay. Ano yung kalagay? D0, D1? Yung dito po sa mga pins? Apa. SD ang nakalagay, sir. Eh. Saan po ba kakabit yun? SD0, uh, SD1, SD2, SD3 yung nakalagay. Ano ba? Tapos yung, yung clock ko, ah. sa sa clock ko na siya iklalagay. CL, CL lang CLK. CLK. So, I mean, uh, dapat na apat lang, ma'am. Eh. Ilang pins ba ang L OLED apat. na nakalagay? So, di ba merong ground sa VCC? Opo. Opo. Ano? Okay na po yun. Yung so, dalawa yung, na lang. Okay. Yung SDK so, na lang. Anong nakalagay nung sa na, Anong label nakalagay sa iyo sa OLED? Uh, so, OLED po, SDA. SDA, tsaka? SCL. Oh, SCL, oh. Apo. Yung SDA, so, pwede mo siya kahit saan ilagay. And SCL, saan ilagay. So, mga pins mo na siya ilagay. So, sa akin, if you look at my illustration, yung SDA ko, nilagay ko siya sa GPIO 18. Okay, And po. yung SCL, nilagay ko sa GPIO D5. So, pipili ka lang nung kahit anong GPIO na lalagyan. Yeah, pins. Ah, okay po. Ah, so, hindi po siya yung SD dito sa may, ano, nakalagay, may nakalagay po kasi dito yung SD. Zero, oh. SD1, SD2, ah, okay. SD3. Uh, um, ibang ibig sabihin yan. Ano yan siya? Nakakabit yan sa, sa flash memory. Serial ah, okay. data, zero, data one, data two. Ah, okay, okay. sige, sige. So, wag mo siya ilagay dyan. Actually, don't do that. Put the SCL and SDA in that pin because it will not work. So, piliin nyo lang yung mga free na GPIO ang nakalagay or G. G17 or G18. Ah, hindi ko rin kakabit din sa CLK na nakalagay dito. Yung oh, hindi rin pa. Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. Uh, so, Jobs, medyo confusing yes. kasi yun sa fritzing mo, iba yung pinouts kesa dun sa, yeah. ano, sa back. Yeah, sa inyo. Yeah, hinanap ko yung library na kagayang-kagaya sa atin uh, iba. So that's why ano nakikita kayo sa pitching iba yung settings ng pinouts natin sa actual board natin iba din dun sa akin sa actual Yung nandun so, sa ang intro na PDF, intro kahapon Oh, yun siya, yun ang hmm. actual yun, so, same yun. So for those who want to fee, yung kahapon na lang no? Ah uh, Pwede sundin yun dahil sakto. Oh, pwede sundin yun. Sakto. Ay, lagyan ko na lang sa screen. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, nasa screen ngayon, ito yung sa pitching ko, this is another uh, board. Pero actually, same line sila. Puro yan sila ESP32. Uh, Pinagpalit-palit lang nila yung different uh, setting, uh, different uh, uh, pinouts. No? Pero yung sa actual board na nakalagay sa kit, ito yun siya. Uh, I'm showing this in the PowerPoint. 
So kung nahihirap pa kayo tingnan yung label, so ito yun siya. So take note, ito yung uh, USB connector. So ito yung one side. So yung ito, itong ground at yung VCC, ito siya, dapat ikabit natin dito no? sa 3.3. Hindi dito. Okay, careful, no? Dapat yung VCC nakakabit sa 3.3, hindi dito sa BIN. Tapos yung ground, somewhere here. Pwede nyo ilagay dyan. Yung ground. Pwede rin dito. Meron tatlong ground. So, any of these three. So, ito siya. The ground can be connected here, can be connected here, or can be connected there. Tapos yung SCL and SCA, so pwede ka na yung pumili na. So, pwede nyo ilagay yung dito sa 19, 18, 5, 17, 16. For me, nilagay ko sa 16 and 17. So, kung gusto nyo mag-follow lang talaga sa code na nakalagay sa tutorial natin, so, pwede nyo ilagay sa 16 and 17. So, si SCL is nasa kay 16 and SDA 17. But, pero kung inconvenient sa inyo, kasi masyadong malayo, nasa kabilang side, so, pumili na lang kayo ng pins na malapit sa kanya. Okay, isang ano din pala, no? Isang, uh, ito yung usually na nangyayari sa mga these kinds of boards. If you notice, meron tayong GPIO 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Pero sa board natin, para nakalagay siya SD0, SD1. Okay. Simply because itong pins galing from 6, pin 6, uh, GPIO 6 hanggang GPIO 11. Actually, nakakabit yan siya sa uh, flash memory. Flash memory inside. Meron isang flash chip. So, kahit nilabas nila ang pin 9 or pin GPIO 9, GPIO 10, 11, hindi rin yan pwede magagamit. Okay? So, take note of this GPIO pins. Uh, 6 to 11. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Hindi, uh, dapat recommended na, I mean, it's a must na hindi kayo magkakabit ng kahit ano dyan. No? I mean, because <laughs> internally nakakabit siya sa flash memory. So, pag may nilagay kayo dyan na peripherals or LED, hindi na makakommunicate yung ESP32 with the flash memory. That means, mawawala yung file system natin. Okay. So, you can use either GPIOs except lang though from 6 to uh, 11. So, don't put something there. So the rest, you can use that one. Sorry? Ah, yeah, 6 to 11. Yan doon din kasi yung trick nila eh, na parang para sabihin mo na, ay, ang daming I.O. pins. <laughs> Nilabas nila lahat. But in reality, dapat hindi nila dapat i-convert into physical pins. Kasi actually nagamit na yan inside eh. Thank <laughs> you
Grammarly does more. Okay guys, so tell me lang kung natapos niya ng connection so that we can proceed. <laughs> okay na po sir. So Victor is okay. Okay na sir. Okay na po sir. Okay naman, sir Melanie. Okay na? Si John or Ray? Okay. Na po. okay. Okay, so let's proceed. Okay, so once you have connected that one. Okay. So we're going to define the SSD 1306 LCD object. So gagawa tayo ng, uh, meron tayong module na kukunin, which is the SSD 1306. So, ang gagawin natin, mag import tayo ng SSD 1306. Then, gagawa tayo ng I2C na object, which is connected to uh, 
particular pin. So, kung sa inyo, nilagay nyo sa 18 or 19, so, ito yung settings. Pero, if you do otherwise, so, pwede nyo siyang palitan. So, kung nilagay ko sa 17 yung SEL, so, this must be 17. Kung nilagay ko sa 16 yung SDA, ito siya. No? Okay, and leave everything as is. So, the frequency is actually the rate of communication. Now, I squared C is actually a module of your microcontroller that controls the communication of inter-integrated communication devices. Okay. And since yung SSD 1306 is an I2C device, so inside the microcontroller, yung I2C interface, i-activate mo, tapos magko-communicate siya ngayon with the microcontroller, uh, with the LCD. Okay. So we also have the concept of master and slave no? in I2C. So yung master, siya yung parang overall orchestrator. Kung baga, siya yung in command. And yung slave, siya yung sunod-sunuran sa master. So in other words, so for this setup, of course, sino mo ngayon ang master? <laughs> of course, uh, sino ang master and sino ang slave? So ang master is actually our ESP32 since siya ang magko-control ng LCD. And si LCD is our slave. And take note, ang I2C, pwede kang maglagay ng as many I2C devices as you can for two buses for the SCL and SCL. So, pwede kang maglagay actually ng dalawang LCD or tatlong LCDs na nasa common LCL and SDA line. So, yung dalawang pins lang. Pero you must uh, differentiate them in the, their address. Okay. So, every slave has a corresponding address. But anyway, since isa lang siya, so we will go to the default address. Then, once we created the I2C module, the I2C object, we create the LCD object from the SSD 1306 I2C class with these fields, no? 128, 64. Then, gagamitan mo siya ng I2C object. So, kumbaga, when you create our LCD object, kailangan siya, magre-require din siya ng I2C object, which is defined here. So for this application, meron tayong dalawang objects. No? Si I2C of the I2C class, and then si LCD of the SSD 1306 I2C class. Okay, so dalawang objects. And these are the fields ngayon ni LCD. Okay? So take, keep this handy. So let's now uh, go to our UPICraft and... Uh, Para medyo, oh, malaya. Oh, there. Okay. Okay. So, let's put it here. Now, may binigay ako na sa Google Drive na file which is SSD 1306Py. Okay, this one. Hope you have a copy of that because the SSD 1306Py is actually our uh, library or our module no? for the SSD 1306. So, kung titignan nyo, ito yung siyang laman niya, no? So, merong constant and merong class na SSD 1306. Tatlong class siya. SSD 1306, SSD 1306 I2C, and SSD 1306 SPI. Okay. So, ito siya. Dapat na-download nyo na sa inyong, mic sa in sa inyong microcontroller. So, kumbaga, you can say, you open this, parang ganun. So, if you have that file downloaded, so you open SSD 1306Py. Open. And then, once na-open siya, i-download nyo na. So, download. So, this will actually 
transport this to the file system. So, ilalagay mo siya sa memory ng microcontroller. Okay? So, download ulit. So, kasi nag-error. Okay. Okay, download okay. So, if that is the case, you can now use this no? using the import statement. Okay. Okay. So, let's try to import that. So, once nasa loob na siya, so we can say import. Um, SSD 1306. Ow. Let's just uh, open na lang to. So, i-open ko na lang. Meron din isang file, no? So, yung SSD 1306 demo. Okay. So, let's try to copy na lang muna to. So, so from there, we can say, let's do this on the uh, command line first. So first up is we import from machine, we import pin I to C. And then we import SSD 13 share 6. Okay. So, nirara natin to siya one line at a time na. And, of course, we need to create an I2C object. So, you can copy paste or you can type na, if you want. So, if you notice, I now created an I2C object okay, from I2C class galing sa machine module. And then, I set my SCL to 16 and SDA to 17. So, sa inyo might be different. So, palitan nyo kung saan nakalagay si SCL and si SDA. Okay. So, once you have that, I press enter. So, meron akong I2C object. So, when I press I2C, so I have an I2C object. Okay. And kung if I say help I2C, lalabas yung mga different uh, functions ni I2C. Okay. So, scan, start, stop. Read from right to read. Okay. Now, so John, yeah, yes, sir. Po ko na import ng ano s s s s d one six import error eh. Karon ba? Ah, uh, pero yung binigay ko na meron na na down na download na siya. Yes, sir. Na open ko na rin yung demo. Okay. Pero ito na meron ka ng copy ng s s d thirteen zero six. Yes, sir. Na-download ko na rin. Nandito na sa microcontroller? Ah, okay. Nasa... Opo. So, try mo lang reset, sir. Uh, hard reset. That means... Okay, ita try natin na hard reset. So, pag na hard reset, so import ka ulit. So, copy natin direct. Baka hindi nag-proceed uh, na maigi yung download. So, yun din yung ano, error. Okay. So, kung okay yung pagkakandownload ng SSD, you can do actually an import. Oh, sorry. Ok. 
Okay na, sir? Hindi pa, wait lang po. Ah, okay. <laughs> Medyo matagal, no? <laughs> Alright, now I now have an I2C and I have SSD 13 services. Oh. Baka sir nag-error when you try to import import SSD 1306. Oh, sir, meron nga sir. Diyan ba? Anong error nakalagay? Wait, sir. Asan na ba? No module named SSD 1306 eh. Kaya tinatry ko i-download ulit. Okay, sige. <laughs> but, but for the rest, walang problem? Si Sir Lerman lang nagkaka-problema? Sir, ano yung i-download na file? Yung S SSD 1306 lang? Oh, yan. Tsaka kung meron ka ng demo, Eh, download mo na lang rin while waiting, okay, sir. Yung binigay ko rin na SSD 1306 demo. Para saan yun, sir? Um, itong SSD 1306 yan yung library. Yung SSD 1306 demo, yan yung demo script natin. Which is gagawin natin mamaya. <laughs> Pero while waiting for the time, so pwede mo na lang siya i-download. Pero sir, itong SSD 1306, ito yung ilalagay natin sa sa uh, pi, ano natin sa PyCraft natin. Okay, ah uh, yeah, uh, yun ilalagay sa yung PyCraft, pero kailangan mo siya i-download papunta okay. sa microcontroller. So that you can do imports later. Kasi kung wala siya sa file system mo, when you do import ito Hindi rin siya magra-run kasi wala siyang makikita ang 1306. So, Jog? Yep. What's paano the problem? Ng, uh, paano mag-delete ng file doon sa my device? Right click lang, di ba? Tapos delete. Oo, oh, delete. May de-delete sana ako eh. Oo, oh, pero ayaw? Delete error. Ah, delete error. <laughs> Ito na lang. Uh, try the brute force way. So yung brute force is import. Look at the screen. Uh, OS. Port OS. OS. Then you issue the command OS that remove. Oh, uh, tab. OS. Ayun, remove. No? Type in OS remove yung file name, which is SSD 1306. Dot .py Enter mo yun siya. Click. OS remove SSD 1306. So pag in-enter mo, automatically i-delete niya na si yung previous na file. And then you can download a new copy of the SSD 1306. O sige, delete ko na lang din. <laughs> Para sabay. So once that's delete and if you connect disconnect okay sir os error eh Ganun ba Baka ganun na naman uli uh, so os error try to connect and disconnect 
Sige. If that will solve the problem. And then download. Aneta. So download, okay. So medyo matagal lang mag-download si SSD 1306 kasi medyo malaking file siya. Okay, so ganun lang. So I have downloaded the demo and 1306 file. So, yung SSD demo, ina-download din? Yeah. O, i-download nyo na lang. Pwede din. Para diretso na tayo mamaya. <laughs> Uh, sir, na na download ko na siya, okay naman. And then okay. ako na yung ano, yung symbol diyan sa kaparehon sa screen mo, BF robot. Oh, oh na naparan mo na. <laughs> Tumatak, nakikita ko na siya. Ah, okay. So, sir, hmm. congrats. Advance na advance ka. Ino <laughs> iniwanan mo kami lahat. <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, in that case, kung natapos mo na, you can analyze the code and you can run it on the RAPL yung mga commands like LCD line. Yan nga. You can actually analyze. Eh. Tinry ko yeah, na yan. Tinry ko na LCD fill. Oh, fill. LCD dot fill zero. Zero, oh. Ang error niya, LCD isn't defined. Oh. LCD isn't defined. Oh. oh. Mm. Matapos mo siya iparan si demo. Oo. Oh. Oh, so LCD. Itry mo lang press kung LCD kung uh, makikita niya si LCD na object. Kung wala, then try mo uli run si 1306 demo. Uh, <clears throat> and take note of your wires then ha. Uh, take note pala na si SCL and SDA na galing from uh, micro uh, from OLED to the microcontroller yung dalawang lines minsan pag medyo hindi sila secured nagkaka error yung communication so minsan nawawala si I2C so make sure na yung dalawang uh, ito yung dalawang uh, jumper wires secure na secure kung bigay medyo hindi siya Baga, hindi maluwang yung pagkaka-insert. Kasi pag medyo loose siya, uh, nagkaka-problema sa communication. And sometimes ang wire din ang problem. May display na po. Okay, may display na. <laughs> okay. The F robot. Oh, the F robot. Okay, Ma'am Melanie, okay na? Sir, wala pong display. Okay, pero na-download mo si, ano, yung si 1306 saka si 1306 demo. Yes po. Ando na sa... Nag-okay po yung, yung una. Ah, okay. Okay, so don't Ngayon worry. Po, itong, itong demo, ah. pinapalitan ko pa lang po yung mga pins. Ah, okay. Na, so. ah. But anyway, since naka-download na kayo ng 1306 and 1306 demo, so okay na tayo. So, proceed ko lang. So, 
tin- pinaran nyo na si Demo eh. Naging advance na kayo lahat. Very excited. <laughs> Ay, ako sa <sarang> di pa. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, anyway, so at least you know how it works in advance. Pero just to, ano lang, is balikan natin. Ito, I will explain this later, yung demo. Punta muna tayo, let's analyze first what's yung uh, purpose ng I2C tsaka ni LCD. And also to you, for you to understand kung nag-work ba siya or not. Okay? Okay. So let's say I will restart the system. Control D. Konte, okay. Okay. So first thing is the demo. First thing we have to do is we import the modules. So pag nandito na si SSD thirteen zero six, you can actually run it on the command line. Okay. So first, gawin natin to. Okay. Si LCD muna. No? Do it one line at a time. So from machine import pin, import SSD. So this is a uh, bagong reset yung microcontroller ko. Ah. And si I2C hindi ko pa na run. So I press enter. So meron na. So this time, meron akong I2C na module. Uh, I2C object. No? So kung titingnan ko, I2C dot tab. So, yung mga commands ni I2C. So, read from, read to. One of the things that you can do once you have the I2C object, so remember this is on the microcontroller side, no? yung master. Ito yung master natin na I2C module, which is an object. When we issue a command like scan, So, magscan siya actually ng mga slave devices na nakakabit sa ating I2C bus. So, when I perform a scan, may lumabas na address 6.0. So, this is an hex address. No? Something like uh, 100 plus in terms of address. So, try this. I2C that scan sa inyo. Kung may lalabas, that means congratulations nakikita ng ESP32 yung ating eh, LCD. Pero kung walang lumalabas, then may problema yung communication lines mo. So maybe baliktad yung SEL tsaka yung SCA, SDA. Okay? So yung pinouts mo, baka baliktad. Baka nilagay mo siya sa 17 dito and then 18. Okay? Okay. And might be, pwede din hindi baliktad, pero loose yung mga wires natin. Use loose yung connections ng mga I2C uh, lines. So, pwedeng hindi niya makita. Okay? So, this is the method of troubleshooting kung working ba kung nakikita ng ESP32 yung uh, ating, micro, ating OLED. Okay? So, try nyo. I2C scan. Okay? So, hopefully, may nakikita kayong 6.0. Okay? So, ibig sabihin niyan, oh, good yung communication natin. So, this is one of the techniques pala guys na, na when you program, uh, wag tayong magmadali uh, because matitem tayo na ipaparan agad. Uh, bakit, kasi if we do that way, uh, we are not actually sure kung working ba talaga yung I2C natin. Tapos only to find out when you try to run the program, but hindi nag-work. So, saan, saan kaya ang mali dito? Sa LCD kaya or kay I2C? So, so yung technique dito is ipaparan mo muna sila isa't isa until if one peripheral yung I2C is working, okay ka na, punta ka na doon sa LCD. Kasi minsan pag pinagsabay-sabay mo sila, it's ano siya eh, uh, masakit sa ulo. <laughs> and actually, magiging mystery na kung saan yung galing yung error. Okay. So this is what we call hardware uh, testing one portion at a time or one module at a time. Okay, so everyone can see the I2C scan? Okay. So, walang problem? Okay, sir. May, okay. may, may display na po. Okay. Okay po. 
when you perform I2C. So, may display na. So, okay yung communication natin. So, ngayon, once that's okay, so gagawa na ako ng LCD object. Okay, so pag walang error, that means LCD is initialized. And from that, okay, oh sorry. So from that, meron na tayong LCD object. Oh sorry, LCD. Meron na din tayong I2C object. So they're good, no? So once meron ka ng LCD object, if you go look at the LCD dot tab, lalabas lahat yung function ni LCD. Okay. So we have fill, invert, frame buffer, pixel, power on, power off. Okay. So ito na yung mga different methods na pwede mong gawin once LCD is on. So, try natin si LCD uh, fill. So, LCD fill. So, this is a method ni LCD object. And the LCD fill will require one, ob one, one parameter, 0 or 1. No? 0 means you have to fill every pixel with uh, 0. That means blank. But LCD fill 1, you have to fill it with 1. So try natin LCD fill 0. So if notice, yung LCD ko ngayon, naka-blank. Na? So kung try mo baliktad, ah sorry, LCD fill 0, LCD show mga pun muna pala. No? So if you notice, walang lumalabas sa aking LCD. Now ngayon, try natin LCD fill 1. That means, lalagyan niya lahat ng pixel ng 1. Kung baga, ipapailaw every pixel. Now, pag in-enter ko, walang lalabas. Simply because, hindi mo pa kinol si LCD dot show. Okay. So pag ganyan, dapat all white. So, try nyo. So, LCD.fill 1 at ah, 0. Mag-go off. LCD.show off. Okay. LCD.fill 1. LCD.show. And mag on. Okay. Nasusundan? Your LCD is... Okay. So yun, once you have the LCD working, you can now play with the different uh, methods present sa kanya. Okay, so we have tried LCD fill, LCD show. Now, when we perform LCD fill 1, ah, let's say LCD fill 0, for example. If you notice, hindi automatic mag-off mag mag lahat. Simply because when you call LCD fill, hindi niya pa iso show kasi... Ang LCD natin, sa loob niya, meron siyang tinatawag na RAM o buffer. Tapos yung buffer, yung laman ng buffer, ikakabit niya yun sa every pixel. So kung tatawagin mo yung LCD fill 0, ang nangyayari is nilalagyan niya ng 0 every portion ng RAM. Pero yung loob ng RAM, hindi niya pa kinabit doon sa actual na mga pixels. So gets niya? Yung LCD fill 1, LCD fill 0, doon pa lang yan sa RAM ng, ng LCD. Pag hindi niya pa kinabit yung data niya sa every pixel. Pero pag tinawag mo yung LCD show, that is the time ipapalabas niya na lahat. Kung anong laman ng buffer ng nung RAM sa loob ng LCD, pag tinawag mo yung LCD show, ikakabit niya na lahat ngayon doon sa every physical pixel. So, kaya, pag tinawag nga yan, magsisero. Okay? So, ang laman ng RAM ngayon is all zero. Tapos, nilagay mo yung show, nawala na. Okay? So, that's how we do it. Now, let's play with it. So, let's have the LCD text. Okay. 
So remember, nilagay ko zero, no? Space. So let's put LCD text DF robot zero zero. This one is yung first portion is the string followed by the two parameters, the x and y. So that means kung i-call ko yan, hindi pa lalabas, di ba? Because this will just fill the RAM. So para lalabas yung DF robot, I will use the show. So lumabas si DF robot. Take note of the position, 00, zero and DF robot. So this 00, zero is actually X and Y. Huh? Sabi natin, X, Y. And this X, Y is actually the top, ayan, top right, uh, top left, no? top left portion. So ito yung 00. zero. Okay? okay? So that's how we have that origin. Now, kung gagawa ako ng LCD detects ngayon na zero, then I have 16. Okay? Walang mangyayari, na? Because hindi ko pa nilagay yung show. So, DF robot 0, 16. Ngayon, nasa X value siya na 0. Ang Y value niya is 16. So, 16 pixels Y. Sa Y. So, when I say LCD.show, meron na tayong dalawang DF robot. So, if you notice, hindi niya in-erase yung previews. Because, ang nilagyan niya lang ng ng content is yung RAM. No? So, hindi niya in-erase yung previous contents. So, yan dalawa. And, kung gagawa na naman ako ng LCD text, uh, let's call this Python. And, lagay ko siya sa, hindi na sa zero, maybe sa gitna. No? Uh, gitna ng 128 is around 64. And say, yung Y natin is uh, 32, for example. So, walang lalabas, pero tawagin mo muna si show. So, meron na tayong DF robot, DF robot, saka si Python. Okay? Now, ngayon, kung lalagyan ko na siya ulit ng LCD fill, 0, And I show you, give you LCD show, mawawala lahat. Because every pixel nilagyan niya ng zero. Okay? And then kung lalagyan ko siya ngayon ng bagong text, for example, that one. And then LCD show, isa na lang ang lalabas. Okay? So we can therefore conclude na yung LCD fill, zero, lalagyan niya lahat ng pixel ng zero. And tsaka ka magtatawag ng LCD text to refresh the screen. So typically, yun ang nangyayari. We, we, we refresh the screen by filling it with all zero and then we put the various text. Okay? And uh, erase yan natin. Fill zero. Okay? And then we can now play with the different methods. So testing natin si line. So merong methods na line, horizontal line, fill, Rectangle. Let's try LCD fill rectangle. So, kung lalagyan natin siya, that one. LCD fill rectangle is, it creates a rectangle with the vertices, uh, with the coordinates 59 and 27. Yung length is 10 pixel, yung height is 10 pixel, and itong one is yung fill. Okay? So, in that case, kung gagawin mo siya, and LCD show, doon siya lumabas, ah, sa gitna. Okay. And LCD fill ulit para to erase. And when you do LCD show, zero na. na. So, na-erase na lahat. So, gawa tayo ulit ng rectangle. So, this time, kung gawin natin 50 by 50, Ang lalabas, oh, para lumabas, we have to show the LCD show. So, medyo malaking rectangle. Okay? 
And there are a lot of other methods that you can create. So take note lang, itong mga numbers, these are coordinates. As I said, ito yung 0, 0, 0, uh, 6, uh, 128, 0. Ito is uh, 0, 64, and this is 128, 64. And the rest, x, y coordinates na siya. So when you create this, para, this uh, objects, you are actually creating based on coordinates. So for example, line. Let's create a line. Uh, let's fill muna and let's create a line. So we have here the starting coordinates is 880. The ending coordinates is 128, 220. So x, y, x, y. So a line is defined by two points. Di ba? So this is first point, second point. Then uh, but zero? So the fill must be one. So para may background. And then we have LCD that show. Okay, so meron kang line. So in that case, pwede ka na mag-draw kahit ano. Okay? So play with that, guys. <laughs> Try nyo play now. So if to save time, let's now go to the SST demo. No? So let's reset this, control D. So basically, if you look at the SST demo, all you have to do is same lang. When you run this, EA import niya si uh, SSD 1306, tapos uh, mag-create siya ng LCD objects, and then ira-run niya lang to. So first up is merong 4i in range, 0 to 28. So this is a for loop that runs 28 times, and lalagyan na ng pixel for every point. So lcd.pixels is magdodraw ka ng isang pixel for the x and y coordinates. So yung x is 2 times i, y is 10, then anong color? It's either 0 or 1 lang. No? So once you have that, uh, you can then, so if we have that, uh, once you have downloaded, you can actually run your demo. So ito yung lumabas. So tinawag lahat na. So first stop, gumawa siya ng pixel. Actually, this is the one. Then among, yung line is ito. Then yung fill rectangle, ito. And so on and so forth. So you can actually play with a different uh, mod, ano, uh, graphic primitives. Okay? So you can play with this uh, later on. Okay? But anyway, to save time, so here we have how many objects created. So we have I2C object. We have the I2C class, LCD object of the SSD 1306 class. Okay. And what else? We also have the pin object. Okay. Which is, uh, oh, I didn't, we don't have a pin object. Anyway. Okay. So any questions for this? So I hope uh, you have played with that now. Okay, so if that is the case, let's now go to our final output. So hopefully, andun pa yung circuits new last time. So the final pi, this is also part of the one I gave you, is now the combination of all that we have in the last three days. <laughs> so meron tayong LCD, meron tayong LED, saka meron tayong sensor. So hopefully, hindi nyo... Uh, uh, pinalitan yung mga connections kahapon. For example, yung LED nyo nilagay nyo sa pin 19 pa rin sa akin, naka pin 19. And yung sensor nakalagay sa pin 27. So this one, if you look at this code, it's a while loop. But then, after measuring ng sensor, we measure niya ang temperature and humidity and Fahrenheit. Ilalabas niya sa RAPL yung print. Pero this time, may dinagdag tayo, LCD text, LCD text, kung saan i-output yung temperature saka yung uh, humidity. And then after that, ibabalik niya yung while queue. So, pabalik-balik lang to. Okay, so, uh, try to download that. And pag na-download na, you can run it. So, na-download ko na. So, let's try to run it. 
her run out. To make sure, I'll do a reset, Control D, uh, or I'll do a hardware reset. So take note. Sorry. And uh, and jump parin yung aki mga DHT11 saka yung LED, no? So Wala. Ayun. Para ma-observe niyo rin yung LED, ito LED. So kung i-run natin siya final run. So ito mangyayari na. Ayun. So yun yung kahapon. Kung naka-on yung LED, nagme-measure, tapos i-display niya ngayon sa LCD. On, display LCD. So nakalagay sa aking uh, LCD is temp, temperature F, and then yung humidity. Yung actual humidity. So this is an example of an application na ngayon na kinumbine mo na lahat. Yung LED, yung DHT11, tsaka yung uh, I2C sensor, uh, OLED sensor. Okay? So ito yung culmination of all our, our uh, outputs. Okay? So try to run this yourself. Check if gumagana. And then take note of the pinouts. Okay. Okay, so you have 4:15, so maybe <laughs> sa bahay niyo lang gawin, no? So any questions so far on this application? So So if wala na, so you can try to run this on your own. So we will just have the final notes. <laughs> okay. So ito yung you combine na everything now. Kahapon may nagtanong, I think it's Sir Norman, no? Okay. Paano na siya gawing standalone application? Okay. How do you deploy your code as a standalone application? Na? What if kung tatanggalin mo na siya from the... Uh, microcontroller. No? So during the startup, the microcontroller implementation first executes the boot pie, then followed by the main pie. If the main pie exists, then it proceeds to RFPL. So that means, kung gusto mo na siyang mag-run standalone, dapat yung code mo ngayon, i-rename mo siya as main.py. Because kung i-on mo yung microcontroller, ang first niya i-run is boot pie, followed by the main pie. Kung walang main pie, saka siya mag-proceed sa RFPL. Extra caution lang sa main pi. If you have an infinite loop, that means while through, ang uh, tendency is hindi mo na siya makoconnect with your PyCraft. Pero don't worry because we can use a third-party uh, application which is Patty. And then dun sa Patty ngayon, pwede mo na i-remove yung main pi. Okay? So this is what I'm going to demo sa inyo, no? So in case na gusto niyo na siya i-deploy. Okay. So, i-deploy natin si Final Pi, no? So let's say ito na yung final application ko. Gusto ko na every time i-on ko si microcontroller, ito na yung raran. So, if you have seen nga na naka-practice na tayo, everything's good. No? So, pwede na siyang gawing main Pi. Okay? So, stop ko muna. But take note, ha? this is a while through. So that means ito yung example na ang main pi is a while through. So uh, magra-run siya ngayon. How do you make this as my final pi? So if you look at your files, meron nakalagay ba? walang main pi but merong boot pi. So everyone, ito yung pinaka first na ira-run. So if you notice walang it's all comment, no? So wala tayong main pi. So, so to create a main pi, either i-rename natin to as main pi, tapos i-download, or meron isang shortcut here, which is i-right-click natin. So we'll say final pi. No? 
we right click that one and then default run okay okay Okay, try to run that. Okay, so if that is now the default run, pag i reset natin, So yun ang mayayari, pag naging main pi na siya, when you connect it, hindi ka na makakakonect. <laughs> Kasi nagra-run si main pi, hindi mo siya ma-interrupt. So when these things happen, we usually use putty. Okay. And we connect via serial. So we have another application actually, COM8. And 115, 200. Open. And we have another party application. So actually, same lang siya. Na? Okay. So nagrara na siya actually. So kung i reset ko siya. Okay. Ito ang nangyayari. No? Nagrara na yung main pi. And if you notice, at my microcontroller, lumalabas na siya. So kung i-off ko ito, ah, kung baga, kung i-reset ko siya, sorry. Yan, nag-reset. So yun. nag -ra -ra na yung uh, final pi. Na? So, deployable na yan siya. So, kung tanggalin ko yung power, okay, tapos kabit ko ulit, Ayun. So, nagra-run na siya. So, this is now a standalone application. Okay? Now, ngayon, the problem with this is paano ka makakabit ngayon sa UPICraft? Because nagra-run siya. So, eh, ganito mangyayari. So, what we do is we use putty. Na? Putty. Com8. So same lang siya actually na no? uh, UPICraft and Patty they communicate via serial. Ang kagandahan lang ng Patty is kasi ito when you try to connect dapat magre-respond yung microcontroller. Eh hindi siya nagre-respond eh. So that's why hindi siya nakaka-connect lalabas yung image. So but yung Patty uh, nakikita niya yung output. No? So to stop this, so doon ka sa Patty magko-control C. Okay, so na interrupt and once the control C, if you import, um, OS, sorry, and then you say OS dot list CIR. So if you notice, meron tayong main pi. Ayun, si main pi. <laughs> Main that pi. So, ito yung iraran niya, which is equal to our final pi. No? So, pwede natin siya i-delete. Uh, so, to have that one, OS that remove main pi. And then, so in that case, if you look at OS that this dir. So, wala na si main pi. Okay? 
And in that is the case, pwede kang mag-disconnect. And if you go back to UPyCraft now, so makakabit ka na uli. And if you look at your device, wala na si MainPy. Huh? So kanina, hindi siya nag-connect because nag-run si MainPy. Okay. And kung i-reset mo ngayon, wala na. Kasi nawala ng MainPy. So i-modify ulit natin si FinalPy and make it as the default run. Okay. So final pie. So in that case, if you look at final pie, okay, may red na. So he is now the main pie. Okay. And if you look at your main pie, ito yung nakalagay. Exec open final read pie. So that means in execute niya si final pie. So yun na yung main pie. And pag ni reset ko siya. Okay. So yun. Main pie na siya, nagtatakbo na. Okay? So, nakakabit pa siya, no? Because nakakabit tayo. Pero pag nilagay natin niya uli, so, yan na, lalabas na si Burn Firmware. Because nagra-run si main pie. No? Okay? So, yun. No? So, if we're going to reset the system. So, nasa bootload mode. Ayun. So, nagrala na siya ang main application. Okay. So that is how we deploy na, the application. So merong main pie. So ang first iraran is So if a first iraran is yung boot pie then followed by main pie before RFL. Pero yung main, main pie mo is an infinite loop so hindi siya pupunta sa RFL. So if one cannot connect to your Pycraft then use the party and perform an OS remove main pie command. So you can download it at the www.pati.org. So that's it. Okay, so where do we go from here? So if you find MicroPython so good, and of course, three days is not enough. <laughs> and parang squeeze natin ang six months or one year na Python theory in three days. So I understand that you cannot take it all. So if you want to follow through, I recommend this book, Think Python by Donny Ali. So ito magandang book siya to start with Python. And this is free. Na? You can download it. So hindi siya pirated copy. And of course, there are books that you can write, read. So highly recommended is this one, Programming with MicroPython. Okay. And this one, I haven't uh, have a copy yet of MicroPython cookie. And for the best tutorials, ito yung random nerd tutorials, random lahat. Tapos, you can also go to this. This is in the official micropython.org. This is a tutorial on ESP32 if you want to refresh back on what we have for the last three days. And of course, you can go to the UPyCraft help file. Okay? Kasi pag clinic mo tong help, yan, tutorial online, lalabas ka dun sa UPyCraft na web page particularly sa tutorial niya so this is also a very good tutorial and very easy lang for you to follow okay oh tagal magload but anyway ayun naka chinese so sa google Dra sa google chrome automatic yan na mag convert into english so may tutorial jan on how to use it Okay, so what's next in the series? So some of us are educators here. We are actually offering in the future MicroPython for educators, particularly if you want to program MicroPython in kids. So we use the Mu editor. It is good for kids or for teachers when you want to program in MicroPython. And the good thing about Mu editor is meron siyang uh, uh, ka na block-based system. So meron din kaming uh, block-based system, which is the Mind++, where in, instead of 
using text, you can actually use uh, blocks. Okay. And of course, I do webinars on MicroPython series. So yung three days is just a condensed version. So we have condensed one, uh, two, and four in three days. No? One, two, and four. So actually, I do this in a series. No? So mostly half one uh, half days for every session. And actually, I have 20, 20 sessions if you want to continue with the uh, microphone. So feel free to visit web uh, Igismo from time to time. Maybe we can, we'll post some uh, microphone webinars uh, for you guys. And for your ESP32 and sensor needs, again, we have a lot of uh, modules for you. So every sensor is not capable with uh, Arduino can run with MicroPython and we have a plethora of sensors that uh, we can offer. So aside from those in kits, if you want to have more uh, sensors or other things that you want to connect to your ESP32, just go to our website and you can check and order the various uh, sensors and peripherals that you want to be connected to your MicroPython board. And these are the useful links. Okay, so again, thank you very much for the, your attention. So anyway, for the last time, may mga tanong, you have questions? Hi, sir, kanina po, may tanong si Sir Norman. Kung yeah. may certificate daw po ba kasama? Yeah, gawin tayo, di ba? Anyway, uh, uh, madali lang naman, di ba? Yeah. Uh, okay, so sige, via email na lang. Uh, via email na lang. So can okay. they receive e-certificates? Okay lang? E-certificates or physical certificates talaga? <laughs> E-certificates okay, okay. e is okay lang. Okay. Ah, okay po. Yeah. Email na lang, no? Yes, sir. Opo. Okay. Okay, guys. <laughs> any reactions? Pa? Yeah. Sir Victor. Sa uh, OLED. Pwede yes, sir. Pwede ba yung font nito? Yes, pwede. Uh, yung generic na SSD 1306, we have no choice. This is, if you look at the text, uh, 8 by 8 siya, 8 pixel by 8 pixel, and a single font. Um, I have a library, which is mini frames library. It's a library wherein I can put uh, fonts, so different fonts. Also, a library wherein you can display images. So I'm still... Uh, developing that and hopefully i will release it uh one of these days uh, but it has a production ready na if you want to have that uh, mini frame library so medyo madugo lang siya mag advance because uh kung font kasi is uh gagawa ka ng mga bagong glyphs and you can uh set the size diba kung meron tayong font we set it in 20 point font or 30 point font. That means how uh, gano kataas in pixels yung font. So yung generic na, na pinaglaruan natin ngayon, yung LCD that text, those are 8 by 8 uh, pixel fonts lang. And is isang font lang. Okay, so isa yung main drawback na nakita natin. So, but there are libraries. If you also have to look at the internet, there are guys who have created these fonts. So ngayon lang, you have to dig in into their code. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, questions, Papa. Yeah. <laughs> Hindi ba sumabog yung mga utak? <laughs> okay na ako, sir. Okay na. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, mind you guys, no, uh, we squeeze in everything in three days and parang I tried my best to make it as easy as possible. So, I would admit if I myself within you, hindi ko rin talaga makukuha within three days. So, kailangan siya ng inyo. But the, the idea is at least for you to have a grip, gra uh, grasp of what MicroPython is and what are the capabilities it has. So, I hope I have delivered that sa inyo guys, no? What are the capabilities of MicroPython? What I can do with it? And how can I learn the various modules available in internet? Okay. Okay. So, kung walang question, maybe may mga reactions or something. <laughs> na, how do you feel about the uh, three days and so on? 
Medyo beaten na uh, masakit sa ulo. <laughs> <laughs> si January, yeah. Uh, but I was I was actually sir uh, siguro in the future I would suggest siguro yung since we already mentioned about comparison with the Arduino like siguro servo naman siguro. As you mm. see in the robotics din naman yung ano namin. Mm. So baka pwede naman no. Servo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh If you look at the libraries na naka-link doon sa EGIS mo, uh, yung demo, uh, particularly, uh, back natin. This one. If you look at here, ito yung link na sa website. Na? Ito, this one. Link this one, 30 MicroPython projects. So, pwede nyo yung pag isa-isahin to. Anyway, from this uh, workshop, pwede, pwede nyo nang i-follow everything that we have here. At least, right. you know. And may mga web servers na. Tapos, relay modules. I think may servo dito eh. Okay. Then, yung MQTT and so on and so forth. No? Ito mga web servers. Uh, yeah. Okay. And also, guys, uh, don't forget go to my MicroPython PH. Okay, so this is a Facebook page that I'm advocating. Wala ka pa bang YouTube channel mo, sir? Wala pa. I don't have the time. <laughs> <laughs> Pero uh, I have one guy in MicroPython PH. Meron siyang YouTube channel. Maganda din. Uh, papakita ka sa inyo. Si Tech to Tinker, which is a friend of mine from Tagum uh, City. So, ito siya. So, you can uh, add yourself in this group. So, MicroPython PH. We are curating this. And ito si George Bantige. So, meron siyang YouTube channel na you can follow. And kung after this workshop, pwede nyo tingnan ito mga tutorials niya. Maganda din, na? For beginners. So, meron siyang servo and everything, mga blockings and everything. So, yung YouTube channel niya, mag maganda. And uh, easy to follow. And since after this workshop, meron ako yung basic knowledge, so you can appreciate his uh, uh, tutorials more also. And of course, sa ESP32.org. Huh? Uh, no, no, uh, micropython.org. Ito. If you look at the quick reference, Jan. So this is very helpful also. You go to ESP32. Yan. So step-by-step -step guide. Okay. Pero hindi siya in-depth, pero I mean... It will uh, get your feet working correct the, at uh, at a fast rate. So, ito yung ginawa natin kanina, no? Networking, no? then delay timing, timers, pins, and GPIOs. And if you look at the Auson Python and at the community, daming mga modules na ginagawa. So, PWM is used to control the servos. So, we have the analog and so on and so forth. You can play music and among others also. And you can deploy projects. So yung mga projects na ginawa ko ngayon is si Pirate Fishnet. Uh, I created a uh, wireless sensor network sa C. So yung application ko kasi nasa dagat. I created MicroPython-based IoT devices. So I play with LoRa, uh, um, MQTT, and so on and so forth. So deploying uh, applications in the C. Okay. So, okay, so I guess uh, we can wrap this up. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Thank you, sir, for say, uh, sharing your deep knowledge in MicroPython. Uh, and for deep. giving us... <laughs> di, pa, di pa ba? Parang sa amin, deep na yun. <laughs> <laughs> Sana, sir, di kayo magsawa na turuan. Uh, it depends. Uh, yeah. Joke lang. <laughs> <laughs> oh, si Ma'am Norman and Sir uh, Melanie. Uh, sir Norman and Sir Melanie, thank you. And hopefully, uh, ma ma gamit nyo sa school. No? So, uh, ano lang, um, if you want to have a special session on this on your school, we are open also. 
So, with Igis Mo and me. Thank you, sir. And, of course, uh, member kayo doon sa micropython.ph so that if you have a question, I can answer you there also. Yung micropython.ph na uh, Facebook page. So, we're planning kasi na to make this uh, everywhere in the Philippines. So, as much, many users as possible, then that's welcome. Okay? Sige po, sir. Sige. Thank you, sir. Thank you po. Thank you. Thank you. So enjoy your kits. Thank you, Paul. Okay, thank you. Thank you.